everyone. Welcome to another episode of FPV Inside Look. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the dope. Oh man, what a crazy world out there right now. At least we can build some drones and fly in peace and still have that social distance. Welcome to another episode of FPV Inside Look. Today we're going to be taking a look at the T-Motor F7 flight controller, which I'm really excited to check out. And we're going to pair that with some 2207.5 1750 kV pacer motors, also from T-Motor. And we're going to build up a 6-inch drone and show you how to get it going. So let me disinfect and we'll get right into this build. Now that I'm all cleaned up, let's talk about what we're building here. I will be using the T-Motor F7 flight controller. That will be soldering into a Hobbywing 60 amp ESC, and it's all gonna be going on an iFlight six inch frame. As you can see, I have the Pacer 2207.5 motors here at 1750 kV. This drone will be flying off of 6S, so that's why I have that kV size. Here's the Hobbywing, and the reason I chose the Hobbywing is because it's a very, very popular ESC, and you're not always building a stack with easy parts that you just bought. Sometimes you're taking parts from this quad and parts from this quad and making them work. So to be able to wire up a flight controller with a different brand ESC is what we're gonna do here. Now, I love the T motors. I've had them a bunch in the past. I've had the F60s. These are the F20s and they're 3750 kV on a three inch drone. I run this on 4S and I absolutely love it. It's great. It flies like a five inch and this thing is perfect for parking lots, playgrounds, a real incognito flyer. So let's look at the flight controller and see what it comes with because there's a couple things on here that I really, really like. At first, there'll be a QR code and scan that with your phone so you can look at the directions and the wiring layout. Of course, it comes with some motors, says it passed quality control. Now, something that I love with flight controllers is when they come with their plugs. Now, this is gonna go from the flight controller and then this is gonna plug into the ESC. Now, if this was a stack, you would simply just use the provided plug and every, all the pins would line up nice and easy. But that's not always the case. And what they did here is they gave you a plug on one side to go into the flight controller, and then the other sides are just open. And they came with a couple of extra plugs so you can just put it in the way you want and line it up for your ESC. I think that's really good, really smart. When you try to pull these plugs out of that little holder, sometimes you bend the plastic and it doesn't go in very good again. Looking at the flight controller, I really like it. Everything's spread out, easily labeled. So if you don't have the manual, it's written on there. It's very simple. VTX will go over here. You can run off of five volts or the battery. Your camera's over here. Again, you can run off of five volts or the battery. Now, what I like on the backside is there's a, some bridge pads here for pit mode. When you plug in your drone, it will automatically be in pit mode so your VTX doesn't overheat. Sometimes you plug the battery in just so your GPS can acquire satellite signals. By having the pit mode enabled on the flight controller, your VTX isn't enabled or it's, a, it's in a very low milliwatt and it won't get hot. Then when you're ready to fly, you flip the switch and it's good to go. Everything else on this is very straightforward as far as flight controllers go for drones. And I'm really excited to get into this build because I love building, it's fun. And uh, it's springtime. This drone will be meant for everything. Uh, medium, long range, and freestyle. I live in the Sierra Nevada mountains and that's my flight style. I want all my drones to be able to, to reach a mile if I want to. I have a Nano Crossfire receiver, long range antenna. Eventually I will have a GPS. And I will have the Rush Tank Mini VTX on this also. So let's get it on the mat, get some solder ready, and start the build. First thing I did was make sure my ESC and flight controller are communicating, so I make sure the ribbon that connects the two have the proper pin placement. You will fry your flight controller if you wire something in backwards. I also dry fit my motors, make sure they will reach the ESC because that's a long distance. I personally am going to put some orange braid over these motor wires just because it looks good and I like uh, adding a little flair and color to my builds. 
Once you have that up, I actually mount my motors to the arms and then I run my wires into the ESC. I personally like to run my wires on the inside of the ESC because if I ever land in a bush, the, the bush can actually pull on my solders if my motor wires are soldered to the outside. So I try to run them on the inside. After that, we can put our flight controller on top and start laying out the placement. First thing I'm gonna wire up is the camera. Then I wire in the crossfire. Now the crossfire on the online manual says wired into T3 and R3, but the smart audio for the VTX is also on T3. So you can't have all that on UR3 on the same ports. So after talking to them, it's just a typo, I moved it over to UR5. So I went to T5 and R5 for my crossfire. My smart audio is on T3. Next, I will wire in my VTX. Uh, on the camera and VTX, there are some bridge ports that I mentioned to supply power to those units. You do have to solder those and bridge one of them. You have to pick if you want five volt or battery voltage to your camera and VTX. If you just leave that open, they won't power on. So you'll have to pick five volt or battery. I chose five volt for my camera because it's always that well, works pretty good for me. And when that five volt regulator goes out, I can always wire my camera directly to my VTX power out. And my VTX, I'm using the Rush Tank Mini, so that has to have over seven volts. So I bridge that to the battery power because it five volts won't turn it on. On the underside of the flight controller, there is a pit mode VTX or on bridge solder pads that you have to go. I chose to just have it on all the time. Uh, I fly in the same spot all the time, so when I run GPS, the satellites won't need too long to acquire signal, and it doesn't matter for me, I'm not much of a racer, so I didn't put it on a switch, but this flight controller, you can put pit mode on a switch so you don't overheat your VTX while you're sitting there ready to arm, waiting for satellites to acquire, you're getting your goggles on, your controller, it's in pit mode, and then by the flip of a switch, it'll activate your VTX in a higher power. Once that's all wired up, I did wire in a buzzer. Uh, that way, if I lose this guy, I can find it. This will be doing some medium to long range. So that's about it. I do have my antennas run off the back. The Immortal T is here and my long range antenna is here. That way it's the highest part of my drone. I'm always worried about video signal dropping out before my crossfire does. So that's more important for me. And other than that, we're ready to go. Let's plug it into Betaflight and change some of the settings there. Now, once in beta flight, first tab we're gonna to go to is the ports. Go to the UART 5, because that's what our Crossfire is set up to, and turn the Serial RX button on. Also under the UART 3 line, go all the way to the right side to peripherals and turn on the TBS Smart Audio. That will allow us to communicate with the VTX by our controller. Next is the configuration tab. First thing I'm gonna do is tell Betaflight that I'm running in a props out configuration. This doesn't reverse my motors, but it does tell Betaflight how my props are spinning. A little further down, you can add in a custom name to put in your OSD. Then we're gonna to turn to the receiver mode and turn on serial based receiver. And then the serial receiver provider is gonna be CRSF, which is Crossfire. That's what I'm running on this drone. Make sure your telemetry is also on in the configuration tab. At this point, if you have your crossfire in your controller and it's bound to your drone and your crossfire is set up properly, you should be able to communicate with the drone. If you click on the receiver tab, you should see movement on the screen of your computer relative to the movement on your controller. If that's good, we're gonna move on to modes and set up our switches for ARM. If that's not the case, you'll have a little bit of troubleshooting to do. Feel free to ask me some questions if you can't get it going. In the modes tab, we're gonna add range to ARM and figure out what switch you want. Make sure you set up the range for that. I'm also gonna do a buzzer and set that switch up. After that, we can get into our OSD and set up that. You can basically download the VTX table from Rush FPV if you're running that, or a lot of other companies will have the VTX chart that you can just download from their website, drag and drop, copy and paste, it's that easy. After you do the VTX table and set up your OSD, we're pretty much ready to go. So let's take this bad boy out and get ready for a test flight.
All right. Ah, well, that was a success and a whole lot of fun. Best thing about this social distancing is I enjoy flying alone. If you're wondering how the motors did, they did great so far, really happy, and I'll put together a video a review and some flight footage of these Pacer motors real soon as I get some more batteries in them. Please make sure you like, share, and subscribe as always, and until next time, keep ripping packs.